So I think one of the first things we can start on is I think the Intel spec, that's probably what comes up the most. And I think with most of the people that were a bit confused about our video and who was to blame or what was going on, didn't really understand what the Intel spec is. And again, you can be excused for that because <laughs> Intel does not make it clear what their, their broad, or as I said in the video, their loosely defined specification is. So most people think of the Intel spec, the spec as the TDP spec, which you, know, you have PL1, PL2, uh, PL2 enforced uh, using a, a turbo timer. And that's the specification that Intel defines. That's their, what would you say, uh, Gamers Nexus refers to it as the guideline or their, their guidance. Yeah, so essentially and when Intel is, you know, producing, they produce a document that they send to OEMs mm -hmm. who make motherboards, who make desktops, who make even laptops for laptop processors. And it has a list of their sort of default values, which as you say, Gamers Nexus mm -hmm. sort of refers to as guidelines or something along there. And you'll have in that table, um, maybe I'll be able to find it and put it up on the screen, but it will have a PL1 and it will usually state that as the TDP of the processor. So that will mm -hmm. be 65 watts for a locked part. Then there'll be a PL2, which will be the turbo boost period. And then there'll be a TAU, which is the turbo boost duration. So the combination of all these things tells you how high the power can go when we're boosting in the boost state, how long that boost state can be, and then what power level do we drop down to once we're beyond the boost period. And Intel provides some default values for that. But that's not the end of the story, is it? No, so there's been a lot of videos over the years that explain all the stuff that Tim just talked about. And regular users, they kind of glaze over and go, I've, I've heard all these things and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It's quite complicated. And it kind of is. And it, it, as Tim said, it's not the only specification. So these processes, which we used to talk about more, have a clock multiplier table. It was much more simple when they had like four <laughs> cores. So there was only, there was four different states. So I've got some notes here. I've got the clock multiplier table for the 11700. I suppose it's important to note that the default clock multipliers are something that Intel no longer publishes. So it makes it quite difficult to work out at what frequency without power limits the CPUs should be targeting. Uh, and stuff like all core is kind of important information to know because with TDP limits in force, that can move around and it can be different from board to board depending on how uh, efficient the VRM is, how well they've done with their voltage tuning to get within that 65 watt limit, all that sort of stuff. So anyway, in the case of the Core i7-11700, when you're using one core, it'll run at a 49 times multiplier. So with the base clock, that gets you 4.9 gigahertz. Two cores, same frequency. So one and one or two cores heavily utilized, the CPU will sustain 4.9 gigahertz. And that is the published max boost frequency. So whatever you see, like you know, 4.9 or 5 gigahertz or 5.3, that's usually one or two cores. So if your workload requires three or four cores, you're at 4.7 gigahertz. So it drops down 200 megahertz there. Uh, then we've got five cores and six cores. So using five or six cores, that'll drop to 4.6. So another 100 megahertz gets shaved off. Seven cores, 5.4 gigahertz. And then the all core with all eight cores active, which is what I saw in my blender workload with the boards without power limits, 4.4 gigahertz. So if there's no power limits in place, those are the frequencies the CPU will run at depending on the workload. And that's really how they used to work when we had up to four cores. So you've got the max boost of 4.9 and then the all core there of 4.4. However, with 65 watt parts, the base frequency in the case of the 11700 is 2.5 gigahertz. And I think, well, why does it have a base of 2.5? if the all core, so when all eight cores are active, it's 4.4 gigahertz. That's, that's a long way away from 2.5. And that comes back to the TDP. So, and this is where it gets all very messy. So when you've got this, this power limited spec, which as Tim said, isn't the only spec, the all core frequency will be brought down to fit within that 65 watt power limit. So it's a sort of a, a package power if you use something like hardware info. And we saw some boards if when they were the voltage was tuned very well, they would run at a 3.2 gigahertz all core. So that's well down from the 4.4, but some went as low as 2.9. So the voltage tuning wasn't very good there or the VRM wasn't very efficient, a lot of wasted power. It's probably more voltage than anything really because of the way it works. Uh, but yeah, you're still looking at like a 10% variance 
four TDP limited motherboards. And of course, as I said, even 3.2 gigahertz is well below, or it's a big jump up to 4.4. So we're seeing up to 50% performance boosts in some instances. So that's an explanation of the difference between the TDP and then the clock multiplier table. And where people get confused is they think that the TDP, TDP specification is the specification, but it's not. Intel have a loosely defined specification. So as long as you're running at either those TDP power limits or up to the clock multiplier table, anything at either extreme or anywhere in between is all within the Intel specifications. So very confusing. <laughs> it leaves it leaves a lot of room to move in terms of performance because as I gave the example, which I feel like a lot of people didn't watch that video right through to the end where I showed from, I think it was the seventh generation, the eighth generation, the ninth yep. generation, then we skipped to the 11th, where because Intel's been stuck on this 14 nanometer plus 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 process for so long, normally you would move to a new node that's more efficient, increases density, and you get your performance and efficiency improvements that way. But because they've been stuck in the one spot trying to add more cores and make them a bit faster, increase the, the max turbo, having to drop that base right down. And it's creating this huge discrepancy between the base clock and the boost clock, especially for parts that, that they're lower uh, tier parts like the 65 watt ones. So I think the example was something like it was around 16, 15, 16% between the base and boost with seventh gen. And it's crept up ever since then. I think it's like almost 100% now with 11th gen with, with parts like the 11700. So as I said, there's just a huge room to move there in terms of performance. So you can be within the spec anywhere and get radically different performance. And that just makes yeah. for a, so I, a, a pretty awful user experience, really. I think a lot of the confusion comes, as you say, down to people believing that the spec is one thing as opposed to mm -hmm. a range of things. So mm -hmm. if you think about Intel specification as a range, then it becomes much easier, in my opinion, to understand what Intel allows the processor to do. So as you were talking about, the minimum specification that Intel allows is basically like a guarantee of performance. They say you're going to get at least the base clock and you're going to be using it's provided that you have enough power to run at the TDP, which for the 11700 mm -hmm. that we've been using as an example is going to be 65 watts. So that defines sort of the minimum guarantee. So when, uh, let's say you're a big business customer, you want to make sure you're getting a certain level of performance, you want to do a lot of validation based on a certain level of performance, then you need to know what is the minimum that you could possibly get. So that's where that specification comes into play. And then for more enthusiasts like us, like people who would buy Z590 motherboards and run big coolers, Intel has a range that you can run all the way up to. And that's where we start to see the clock multiplier table. And anything mm -hmm. in between there, like for example, you might have a, let's say you have a motherboard that is running power unlimited, but your cooler isn't very good. So it's going to run at, you know, it could be running at the temperature limit, for example, which would then cause power limits to come into play. It might run in the middle of that range. Or you might get a board where, you know, it, it can't sustain 250 watts, but it can maybe do 150 watts. Well, then it's going to run again yeah. somewhere in the middle of that range. And all of these things are allowed by Intel. And as you say, they've kind of trying to have the best of both worlds here by advertising a really low minimum that allows people to mm -hmm. get away with using low end VRMs, using really crappy entry level coolers and say that that's allowed while also giving enthusiasts the ability to run them at ridiculously high frequencies while using tons of power. And by not advertising either of these things particularly well and just allowing people to go, oh, well, this is a 65 watt processor that can run at 4.4 gigahertz, which is not necessarily true with both of those things enabled at the same time, then yeah, they're kind of getting, it makes it look like their processor is much more efficient or alternatively much faster than it really is under one of those conditions being limited to. Yeah, exactly. And as reviewers, it's been confusing for us. So over the years as, as this has evolved, so it's no, no, uh, surprise, I suppose, that the audience is confused as well. And perhaps we haven't done the best job of explaining it over the years. And a lot of people are focused on, it's easy to focus on what the TDP, uh, TDP spec is 
because Intel tells us what that is. And then it's been assumed that it's the motherboard uh, manufacturers that are just making up their own spec or running without power limits and they're doing that at their own free will, which certainly isn't the case. But then if you go and ask Intel, you know, is this board running at an all core of 4.4 gigahertz, you know, following the multiply table, is that it within spec? They will tell you, yeah, that's within spec. But <laughs> they don't, it's not clear to the viewers, to people buying it, that that is within spec. So it creates all of this confusion. So yeah, we're trying to address that as best we can, but it's also difficult to explain all the different operating parameters that you'll run into mm. with these boards. 